In sections 7.4 and 7.5, we'll look at some more properties of logs, and then we'll use these properties to help us solve more exponential and logarithmic equations. Now, if you remember the properties from the last section that I gave you, you do want to have those memorized just to speed up different processes throughout. If you don't have them memorized, of course, you can always rewrite the log as an exponent and come up with the same answer but you don't want to have to waste the time to do that every single time. Some additional properties that you need to know. The first one, the log of x times y is equal to the log of x plus the log of y. Or in other words, when you have multiplication, you can separate it by taking the log of each one individually and add them together. When you have division, the log of x over y, you can separate them by taking the log of x minus the log of y. And then one more, when you have an exponent, you can bring that exponent out front and multiply by the log of x. So using these properties, we're going to expand the following problem. That is, we need to write it as a sum, difference, or product of individual logs of x, y, and z. Now, most of the time, the easiest way to do this would be to look for division first, multiplication second, and then exponents third. So if we're following that, you'll notice that we do not have any division in this problem. We do have multiplication, so we separate multiplication by addition. So it would be the log of x squared plus the log of y to the third. And then the last, we look for our exponents, bringing those exponents out front. This would be 2 log of x plus... 3 log of y. This next example, the natural log of x to the fourth, y squared over z to the third. This time we do have division, so we'll separate it by taking the log of the top minus the log of the bottom. We have multiplication, so we'll separate the multiplication by addition. And last, we do have exponents, so our final answer would be 4 natural log of x plus 2 natural log of y minus 3 natural log of z. This next one, the natural log of 2, base 2 of the square root of x over y. Again, we do have division, so we'll separate it by taking the log of the top minus the log of the bottom. There is no multiplication, and you've got to be very careful here. We do have an exponent. If you'll remember, the square root is the one-half power. So we do need to bring that one-half out front to show that that was the square root of x. Now, we also need to be able to use the properties backwards to condense and write it as a single log. So that means if we see addition, we're going to multiply. If we see subtraction, we're going to divide. And if we see a number in front of the word log, that's going to be an exponent. So when you're working these problems, you need to write the word log one time and don't write it again. And you're going to work from left to right, asking yourself what each number and symbol means. So the first thing I see is a one-third, and that number is in front of the word log, so that means that's an exponent. The one-third power is the same thing as the cube root, so we would have the cube root of x. The plus means multiplication. The four in front of the word log means it's the exponent for y, so we would have y to the fourth. The minus tells us to divide, and then we have just z. All right, let's look at this next one. If you'll notice, they've added some additional directions to us. For us, it says simplify as much as possible. So that probably leads us to believe that we're going to have to do some additional work once we put it back together. So writing it as a single log, because of the minus sign, that tells us we're going to divide. So we have this 6x, I mean, x squared plus 6x plus 8 on top. And then we have it divided by x plus 2. And again, remembering the additional directions to simplify, I'm going to factor that top and see if we can actually simplify this fraction any. The top would factor to be x plus 2, x plus 4. And if you look at it, you should agree that the x plus 2s will cancel. And so this can be simplified as being the log base 4 of x plus 4. All right, this next one, again, they want us to condense, 
And then again, they do mention simplifying, so there must be some additional work to be done once we put it together. All right, so writing the word log one time. Here we go. The 4 in front means it's the exponent for that whole x squared y that's in parentheses. The plus sign tells us to multiply. The 3 is the exponent for 1 over x. The minus sign tells us to divide. And the 2 is the exponent for the y. Now, using your properties of exponents, we'll distribute our exponent. We'd get x to the 8th and y to the fourth. Distribute your exponent again. One to the third is still one, and then we would have x to the third. And then all of this is divided by y squared. Now, looking at the top, you should agree that x to the eighth on top multiplying by one over x to the third on bottom, that's essentially division. And when we divide, we subtract our exponents. So eight minus three would leave us x to the fifth you have y to the fourth, and that's divided by y squared. Again, you've got division with your y's. Again, you need to subtract your exponents. So your final answer would be log of x to the fifth y squared. Now we're going to use these properties to help us solve logarithmic and then eventually exponential equations. Now. There are two methods for solving our log equations. The first method is when you have a single log equal to a single log. Since the logarithmic function is one to one, we can drop the logs and just set the different parts equal and solve it. If you have a log equal to a number, you're going to have to rewrite it as an exponential and solve what you um, are left with. Now make sure you notice at the bottom, you can never have the log of a negative, so if you get a number that would make you take the log of a negative, it cannot be your answer, so you would have to eliminate it. All right, so let's look at this first one. We've got a log equal to a log, so we're just going to drop those logs and solve what's left. So 3x plus 4 is equal to 5x minus 7. This is a simple linear equation. If I subtract 3x and add 7, we would get 2x is equal to 11, so x must be 11 over 2. And if you'll check that, that does not require you to take the log of a negative, so that would be your answer. Now let's look at the second method. The second method, we do not have a log equal to a log. We have two logs equal to a number. But I can put these two logs together using our properties Remember, when, you're mul uh, when you have addition, that's multiplication. So I do have a log equal to a number. Now remember how to rewrite that. You start with your base, and you raise it to the exponent that's on the other side. So this would be 2 to the third power is equal to x times x minus 2. 2 to the third is 8. When you use your distributive property, that would be x squared minus 2x. And that's going to leave you a quadratic equation. Easiest way to solve the quadratic would be to set it equal to zero and factor it. This factors to be x minus 4x plus 2, and that gives us two possible answers, x equal to 4 and x equal to negative 2. Now notice I said two possible answers because remember you cannot use any numbers that would make you take the log of a negative. So if you check the 4, plugging it back in for x, you would have the log of 4, which is fine. You would have the log of 4 minus 2, which is 2, which is fine. So 4 can be an answer. But then if you try to check the negative 2, plug it in right off the bat, you would see you would take the log of negative 2. You cannot take the log of a negative, so you cannot use negative 2 as your answer. So you would get just 4 as your answer. Looking at this next one, I do not have a log equal to a log. I've got two logs equal to a number again, so I need to put the two logs together. Again, it's addition, so that means multiplication, and set it equal to the number. Rewriting this, find your base, raise it to the exponent. So we would have 4 to the third power is equal to this x minus 3 times 2. 4 to the third power is 64. Multiplying the 2 in, we'd get 2x minus 6. Now looking at this, this is a simple linear equation. 
I'll add 6 to both sides and get 70 dividing by 2, we would get x is 35. And check and plug in x, um, 35 back in for x. You would have 35 minus 3, which is 32, which obviously is not negative. So 35 would be your answer. All right, this next one. Again, we've got two logs on the left-hand side, so we can rewrite it as a single log. It's subtraction this time, so that means division. And then we need to rewrite it. But the problem is we always start with our base when we're rewriting, and there is no base written here. You've got to remember, natural log has a base of E. They're not going to write it, but it's understood. So it's going to be E to the sixth power is equal to that x plus 1 over x. Now you could go ahead and use your calculator and figure out what e to the 6th power is, or you could continue to just solve this with the e to the 6th power in and plug in, use your calculator at the end. So if I was going to leave it, to get rid of fractions, you multiply by the least common denominator, which is x. And then if I need to solve for x, I'm going to subtract x from both sides. Now since I have two terms that have an x in it, I'm going to factor that x out. And then last, we'll divide by this e to the 6 minus 1 to make sure we get just x. So your answer would be x is equal to 1 over e to the 6th minus 1. And then again, if you want to find the actual value for that, you could put it in your calculator. Either one would be considered correct. This next problem, you have a log equal to a log, so they will just cancel, setting the two parts equal to each other. It is a simple linear equation. I'll add 3x to both sides. I'll add 4 to both sides. We get 10x is equal to 20. So x would be 2, and checking it 2 can be an answer. Now, solving our exponential equation. We've already looked at the first method. That was when we set our bases or made the bases the same, and therefore we were able to set our exponents equal to each other and solve them. But sometimes the bases will not be the same, so we've got to look at a second method as to what to do when they cannot be made the same. You're going to take the log of both sides, and then you'll solve the resulting equation. So this goes back to what we did the other day. I can make my bases the same. 8 is 2 to the third and you still have that exponent of 5x minus 4. 64, if you'll remember, is 2 to the 6, but I want it to be 1 over 64, so that's going to be to the negative 6 power. Taking those exponents, setting them equal. Again, this is just a simple linear equation. We use our distributive property. I add 12 to both sides. I divide by 15. And that will tell me x is equal to 2 fifths. Now this next one, if you'll notice, you can't make the basis the same. The 2 cannot be changed, and 57 cannot be rewritten as any power of 2. So we have no choice. We must use the second method, and we must take the log of both sides. Now you could use the common log or the natural log, because this will involve using your calculator. But we're going to take the log of both sides. Now, remember in our properties of logs, one of the properties says we can always put our exponent out front. Well, if you do that, you'll have 5x times the log of 2 being equal to the log of 57. If I need to solve for x, I can divide by the 5 and the log of 2 to get that x by itself. Everything cancels. And we would get x is equal to the log of 57 divided by 5 log of 2. And again, if you wanted the actual value, you could put that in your calculator and get the decimal. All right, looking at this next one, I believe we can get our basis to be the same. I'm going to leave 2 thirds. But 4 over 9 could be 2 thirds squared, and then it's still to the fourth power. 
So since my bases are the same, the exponents are the same. 2 times 4 is 8. That is a simple linear equation. I subtract 3 from both sides. And we would get x is equal to 1. But now looking at this next one, 7 cannot be broken down any further. And I have no idea if 1,922 can be written as 7 to some power. So I'm not even going to waste my time trying it. I'm going to go ahead and use the second method and take the log of both sides. All right, again, remembering our properties of logs, we can bring this exponent out front. So we would have negative x plus 2 times the log of 7 is equal to the log of this 1922. Now I can divide both sides by the log of 7. But that's only going to leave me negative x plus 2. I need just x by itself. So to get x by itself, I need to subtract 2. from both sides, and then I need to divide by a negative or change all the signs. So this is going to make it a negative log of 1922 over the log of 7 plus 2. Or you could rewrite it as 2 minus the log of 1922 over the log of 7. All right, this next one. Again, I can rewrite 4 as 2 squared, but that's not going to get me anywhere because the 11 cannot be rewritten. So again, I'll go ahead and just take the log of both sides. Remembering our property, I'm going to bring that exponent out front. Now again, I can divide both sides by the log of 4. But that's just going to give me the 3 minus 2x. So I still have more work to do to get x by itself. I need to subtract 3 from both sides. And then I need to divide everything by a negative 2. So simplifying this, we'd get x is equal to Dividing by 2, same thing as multiplying by 1 half. So that's going to be the log of 11 over the log of 4. Multiplying by negative 1 half is going to put a negative on top and a 2 on bottom. And then the negative 3 divided by negative 2. Negative divided by negative is a positive. And so that would be a positive 3 over 2. And again, you could rewrite this as 3 halves minus the log of 11 over 2 log of 4. Now one more, and if you'll notice in this problem, you have a base of e. Now in all the other problems, when I've rewritten it using a log, I've used the common log, but you could have definitely used the natural log on all of those because you could use your calculator for that. And this one, you're going to want to make sure that you use the natural log because of the e. So getting the e by itself, we'll divide both sides by 2. And if you'll remember, when you take the natural log of E, one of your properties says that they are opposite functions and they're going to cancel each other and just leave you that exponent of 2x plus 9. Now solving this for x, I can subtract 9 from both sides. I can divide by 2 and we would get x is equal to the natural log of 7 minus 9 all over 2.